Today back then, what happened today in modern history? Let's get most smartest. In 1741, the Royal Military Academy is formed in Woolwich, England. In 1742, George Friedrich Handel's brilliant Messiah premiered in Dublin today. The piece has become synonymous with Christmas worldwide. In 1743, future U.S. President and Founding Father Thomas Jefferson is born today. In 1796, the first elephant ever seen in the United States arrives from India. In 1860, the first Pony Express reaches Sacramento, California. In 1861, after 34 hours of bombardment during the U.S. Civil War, Fort Sumter surrenders to the Confederates today. In 1863, the Society for the Relief of the Ruptured and Crippled is incorporated in New York. In 1870, quickly becoming one of the leading art museums in the world, the Metropolitan Museum of Art was founded in New York City. In 1873, at the Colfax Massacre in Grant Parish, Louisiana, 60 black people are killed. In 1882, the Anti-Semitic League forms in Prussia, with more trouble to follow. In 1902, James C. Penny opens his first store in Kemmerer, Wyoming. In 1904, a squadron of the Russian fleet is tricked by the Japanese to sail into a trap. Their battleship, Petropavlovsk, hits a mine and sinks, losing 700 men. In 1906, Nobel Prize winning playwright and critic Samuel Beckett is believed to have been born this day in Ireland, but no one really knows, neither did he. In 1911, New York City's Polo Grounds Grandstand and Left Field Bleachers go up in flames. Also in 1911, the U.S. House of Representatives votes to institute direct elections of senators to the U.S. Congress, which is a step towards direct democracy. In 1918, an electrical fire kills 38 mental patients at Oklahoma State Hospital. In 1919, British troops are ordered to fire into a crowd in India, killing about 400 people and wounding another 1,200. Also in 1919, Eugene V. Debs enters the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary in Georgia for speaking out against the draft during World War II. Yep, they put him in jail. In 1943, on what would have been his 200th birthday, the Thomas Jefferson Memorial was dedicated in Washington, D.C. Also in 1943, the discovery of a mass grave of Polish World War II prisoners of war who were executed by Soviet forces in the Katyn Forest Massacre is announced. In 1944, South Carolina rejects black suffrage. Also in 1944, Transport No. 71 departs the Drancy internment camp in France, moving 1,500 French Jews to the Auschwitz concentration camp in Poland. An estimated 91 people survived the trip. In 1945, Canadian soldier Leo Major single-handedly liberates the Dutch town of Zwolle by fooling the Germans into thinking a raid had begun. In 1946, Eddie Klepp, a white pitcher who is signed by the defending Negro League champion Cleveland Buckeyes, is barred from taking the field in Birmingham, Alabama. In 1948, in an ambush, 79 Jewish doctors, nurses, and medical students and a British soldier are massacred by Arabs near Jerusalem in what becomes known as the Hadassah Medical Convoy Massacre. In 1949, the Mayo Clinic announces the discovery of cortisone to treat rheumatoid arthritis. In 1953, CIA Director Alan Dulles launches the mind control program called MKUltra. Also in 1953, in their first game ever, the Milwaukee Braves beat the Cincinnati Reds 2-0. And one year later in 1954, today is the Milwaukee Braves' Hank Aaron's first game. In 1955, Axis, Alabama receives 20.33 inches or 51.64 centimeters of rain. In 1957, at the 11th Tony Awards, Long Day's Journey into the Night and My Fair Lady win. 
And one year later, in 1958, at the 12th Tony Awards, Sunrise at Campobello and Music Man win. Also in 1958, American Van Cliburn wins the inaugural International Tchaikovsky Competition in Moscow. In 1959, a Vatican edict forbids Roman Catholics from voting for communists. In 1960, Transit 1B, the world's first satellite navigation system, is launched. In 1961, Carnival opens at the Imperial Theater in New York City for 719 performances. In 1962, Stan Musial scores his 1,869th run, which is a new National League record. In 1963, Pete Rose triples for his first Major League base hit. In 1964, at the Academy Awards, Sidney Poitier becomes the first African-American male to win the Best Actor Award for the 1963 film Lilies of the Field. In 1965, the Beatles record their song, Help. Also in 1965, at the seventh Grammy Awards, The Girl from Ipanema and The Beatles win. Just those two winners show you how much music was starting to change. In 1966, Pan Am Airlines placed a $525 million order for 25 Boeing 747s. In 1970, Apollo 13 is crippled when an oxygen tank explodes, leading to Jack Swigert's famous but often misquoted line, Houston, we've had a problem. Also in 1970, at the 5th Academy of Country Music Awards, Merle Haggard and Tammy Wynette win. In 1974, with the help of NASA and Hughes Aircraft, Western Union launches Westar 1, the first commercial geosynchronous communication satellite. In 1976, as part of the bicentennial celebration, the United States Treasury Department reintroduces the $2 bill. I've got several of those laying around the house here. In 1980, the musical Grease closes at the Broadhurst Theater in New York City after 3,388 performances. In 1981, the Washington Post's Janet Cook wins the Pulitzer Prize but later admits that her story was a hoax. In 1983, undefeated middleweight boxer Tony Ayala gets 35 years in prison for sexual assault. In 1984, Pete Rose becomes the first National League player to get 4,000 hits in a career. In 1990, tonight was the final episode of Pat Sajak's late night TV show on CBS. In 1992, Crystal Pepsi begins test marketing in Sacramento, Providence, Denver, Dallas, and Grand Rapids. I don't think it's even a thing anymore. In 1994, the Presidential Guard in Rwanda chopped 1,200 churchgoers to death. Yes, I said chop. Also in 1994, asteroid 7373 Takai is discovered and named after Star Trek actor George Takai. In 1997, 21-year-old Tiger Woods becomes the youngest golfer ever to win the Masters Tournament. In 2000, at the Rock for the Rainforest Benefit Concert held at Carnegie Hall in New York City, the performers included Sting, Elton John, James Taylor, Stevie Wonder, Ricky Martin, Billy Joel, Gladys Knight, Percy Sledge, Tom Jones, Martha Reeves, Macy Gray, Sam Moore, and The Impressions quite a list. In 2002, I didn't mention it yesterday, but the military coup that installed a new president in Venezuela yesterday collapsed today. So that guy is no longer president, and the former president will be restored to the presidency tomorrow. Did you get that? So the new president lasted for one day. Also in 2002, at this year's Rock for the Rainforest Benefit concert in New York City, performers include... Sting, Elton John, James Taylor, Nina Simone, Smokey Robinson, Lulu, Patti LaBelle, Ravi Shankar, Jeff Beck, and Winona Judd. I think every year had Sting and Elton John. In 2006, powerful tornadoes ripped through Iowa City, Iowa. In 2009, U.S. record producer Phil Spector is found guilty of second-degree murder of actress Lana Clarkson in 2003. By the way, 
Has Pacino gotten rid of that hairdo yet? In 2015, a migrant ship carrying around 550 people sinks off the Libyan coast and about 400 people drown. Also in 2015, Avengers Age of Ultron premieres in Los Angeles. In 2019, the body of a 38-year-old Filipino woman is discovered in an abandoned mine which starts the hunt for Cyprus's first serial killer. At least five other bodies are later discovered. Also in 2019, BTS is the first K-pop band to perform on the US TV show Saturday Night Live. In 2020, Italian tenor Andrea Bocelli sings a special Easter concert in the deserted Milan, Italy Cathedral. Also in 2020, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says, I believe the worst is over if we continue to be smart about the COVID-19 pandemic in New York. Obviously, he was way wrong. And lastly, in 2021, voice actor Hank Azaria, who is white, apologizes for voicing Indian actor Apu on The Simpsons for the last 30 years. Thanks for watching my show today. Please make sure you subscribe. I would appreciate it. Talk to you tomorrow.